All right, what kind of bond do we find in metals? We find the metallic bond. And let's take a look at the metallic bond. Now we're gonna learn a couple of different models to explain metallic bonding. Um, the first one we're gonna look at, the one I'll talk about right now, is a somewhat simplified look at the uh, bonding found in metals. I'm going to draw a little sketch here for you. Some atoms. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful atoms. Look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, don't get too hung up on how I'm arranging them here. They're not in a particular crystal structure. I'm just trying to show that there's some, some atoms. Okay. Um, and I'll elaborate on them in a moment. But what we've been doing with bonding, primary bonding, is looking at how we achieve a stable octet, or really, what do we do with valence electrons? And so one model, the model that we're looking at right now, which is, is not too shabby, for, not too bad for explaining some behaviors, uh, behavior of, of metals, is that the valence electrons are contributed contributed to a so-called sea of electrons. Okay, sea of electrons. I'm going to try to draw that in. What color are electrons? Of course, electrons are blue. Well, no, I'm just joking. They're not. I mean, <laughs> um, I'm making them blue because they're negative, and blue is a cold color. Huh? So these are meant to be these electrons, the valence electrons. Okay, they're contributed. So these are, this is negative, right? And there's different ways actually this is depicted. Sometimes you'll just see little negative signs like this showing uh, that. And sometimes you'll see something usually more artistically rendered than what I'm doing right now, but some sort of a continuous C surrounding these atoms. Now, I called them atoms a moment ago. I got to clear that up a little actually. If we've taking the valence electrons away from the atom, then these are not atoms, actually. I mean, they are atoms, but we could be more specific because they're going to have a net positive charge. The electrons are in this sea of electrons. So these are now ions, and they're sometimes called ion, um, ion cores. OK, where's my eraser? There it is. So these are going to be ion cores. It's a more specific name that you'll see is often used to refer to these little positive ions. And they're held together by that sea of electrons. You could see it depicted in one of those two ways. And so that's um, that's not, not a bad description. Um, you know, you can explain some properties of metal. For example, uh, electrical conductivity. These electrons are free to move, or they're delocalized electrons. And so they're free to conduct, uh, free to conduct electricity or vibrational energy through materials. So you're going to have conductors of electricity and of, uh, of heat. And of course, we know that metals are good conductors. So this model explains that. Um, what else does it explain? Well, if we were to apply a stress to this, we wanted to mechanically deform this. Well, you could imagine, you know, with the help of a dislocation, um, that these atoms could slide past one another and they wouldn't pop apart because they would be, so if this is a shear stress, I'm applying here a shear stress, we could imagine, and we use the letter tau, the Greek letter tau for shear stress, that you could move these and slide these atoms past one another without them popping apart. And so that kind of explains uh, that metals are ductile. Well, they can be. Metals are ductile. That is, you can plastically deform them. Okay, we know that to be true, whereas ceramic materials that are held together largely by ionic bonds are, are brittle because you get charge repulsion between um, adjacent planes. Whereas in a metal, it's conceivable that they could slide past each other. In fact, they do, and this model supports that. Um, they're metals are conductors, right? So this model here is not a bad model.
to describe a lot of properties that we know to be true of metals. But we will need a better model to describe in more detail electrical behavior and even some optical uh, behavior.